In the beginning, there was God. And then God decided, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> and, you know, there was only darkness. So he said, let there be. I'm 
I'm separate from you and me and the planet and the plants and the dogs. I become separate. I start living in a darkness. Then I take on beliefs that I am my house, I am my job, I am my income. And then, oh my God, I am my country. All of these things, we become nationalists. We become so separate from our fellows. And then we start living in unbelievable fear that you're going to take what is mine. So violence prevails. Hurt prevails. Fear creates the darkness in our world. But the deal is, the light is still shining deep within our soul, ever longing to be the light and to shine forth, but we get trapped in carnal mind and consumerism. We've totally forgotten the essence of who we are. But our soul so wants to reconnect and go back to the garden, which it's never left. Only in its mind has it left. And usually something happens. A crisis might happen. All of it's usually a midlife crisis, right? For many of us. We get to a certain part of our life. We've achieved everything society tells us is a good person or this person or you've arrived. You've got full success and you're miserable on the inside. You have all the trappings that society and your friends and your family tell you that will make you whole and complete. But you're not. You're more empty than you've ever been in your whole entire life. And you have a breakdown. You have a come to Jesus meeting. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, what's going on here? That's what happened at the crucifixion. Don't we all feel that we've been crucified? At this moment in time, I've done everything right. And by God, I'm still alone. We've all been on the and we've all nailed people on the cross. So the apostles are like, man, this was our dude, man. What happened? He died. He had to remove himself so that we would take ownership of the truth and claim that we are the light. Have y'all ever become so dependent on other people that you don't let your light shine? Have we done that? So when we have this break, this break, a little sliver opens and we surrender. It's like, I've done it all the world way, the carnal way, but it's not working. God help me. That is the first step in transformation. Is complete surrender that my way is not the way. So then what happens? We get a little sliver of the light and we get excited and enthusiastic. I remember when this happened for me, I was so excited I finally woke up that I am the light. And then I went around everybody saying, oh, did you know that God's in control and we really have no control when we are alive and all this is going on and they're like, I said, you gotta come join me and they're thinking, if you're alive, they didn't think it, they said it. <laughs> they said, if your life is any reflection of what your God has to offer, I don't want it. Oh. <laughs> So what did I have to do? I had to start practicing spiritual principles. I had to pray for the knowledge and the wisdom, the divine wisdom that they talked about today to pull me forward. I had to seek and thirst for God with that singleness of purpose. And guess what happened? More life. 
started to shine. More light started to shine, and people started to come saying, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and then what happened? I am all powerful. Oh, I got my stuff together. <laughs> So then you're blocked again because you're all it. And then you have another breakdown and you realize that it is God working through me. Oh, that's the trick. God is working through me. It's not me. God working through me. So I hold on to that and my life is a little bit more sustainable. So then I'm the light. And then high school friends or people, my friends or whatever they're called, show up in my world. You see? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not going to show you my life. Because there's a wall there. So I have to do more work. I have to do forgiveness work. I have to let go of the past and the harms that harmed me. It's painful. I have to go in that dark place of the soul to be reborn and transformed. And when I do that, more light comes through. And then if I can hold the power like we did in meditation and be the light and be love and be peace, then it doesn't matter what I do. As long as I start from that beingness, that state of being, the essence of who I am, magic happens. Magic happens. The promises, the kingdom of God, you're back in the garden, there's abundance everywhere, and you never miss a meal. I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when that happens and things are going good, we kind of step back. And we get a little cocky. <laughs> and we're thinking, I got this down, God. You just take the back seat. I'm in control. <laughs> right? And then we get tricked with our intellect and our zeal and all of the faculties that, oh, maybe I missed the boat. Maybe I need to go do this and do this. We become human beings all over again. So Jesus told us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will happen to you. I guarantee you that when we're not seeking and holding on to the presence of God, the kingdom is not there. We live in darkness. We live with a wall surrounding our hearts. So we have to be willing to be vulnerable. We have to be willing to be teachable. We have to be willing to say, you know what, I don't know. We have to daily surrender our will and our life it's not a one shot deal it takes courage it takes major cojones to say I am the light I am the truth I am the way Jesus claimed it and he owned it and therefore he won the game he taught us the way, but how many of us even thinking about that? If I went into a room and said, hey, I am the way. <laughs> you gotta have cojones to do that or you're gonna be in river press. <laughs> Our society does not allow us to stand and let our light shine. It takes unbelievable courage to say, I am refused to be afraid. That's what Jesus was doing on the way to the cross. And Peter said, don't go. Don't you have people in your life saying, don't go, don't do it, don't, don't, don't. And he said, get behind me, Satan. Don't our thoughts keep us holding back? We have to constantly say, 
I get behind me, I refuse to live in fear. I refuse to do that. I choose to let my light shine. I choose to let God stay in the driver's seat. I choose to be aware and use the desire of my heart and of my soul that craves God. Life attracts light. It wants more light. We have to allow it to express through us. And it's scary. We have to be willing to step through the fear and stand and make a stand. And when we do that, when we experience that oneness with God, we change the world. We change ourselves. We change our families. Because when we have the freedom to be the light, then all we can see is the light in you. that we are the light, we will heal our planet. 